when you sat down, what did you see? Did you even look down or did you blindly trust the object below you to hold your weight and without a second of consideration, lower yourself into it? You did, didn't you? Well, don't worry, I do too, and quite frankly, it'd be weird if you didn't. Because we know that is a chair and the pure function of a chair is to be seated on. And that's exactly what I'm going to do my speech about, which would be pigeonholing. If you're not familiar with it, you could just picture everyone having little boxes inside their head and every object, thing, or person being categorized in that object, or in that box, sorry. So, you could definitely argue this way of thinking to be essential to our survival. For example, when we are evolving primates, um, we could use this feature to basically say that all, uh, all predators from a species are indistinctively dangerous as any other animal from that species. For example, all bears are dangerous, and there is no reason in arguing that the bear that attacked you last week was just grumpy because his dental care didn't, wasn't fully covered by his insurance. <laughs> Pigeonholing is therefore deeply rooted into our unconscious mind. Because you could basically um, use this way of thinking to set a predator in the box of predator and then prey in the box of prey. And therefore, we could um, use this uh, way of thinking to not lose the precious time in flight. But also when we were hunter-gatherers, this was really important. For example, uh, when we encountered a plant that was poisonous. So the berry you tasted, it, it was poisonous, all right? So this way of thinking would ensure that you're not going to try any other berry from the plant and you're just going to stay away because the plant is poisonous, right? So it's pointless to try any other plant or the basically any other berry from that plant because you know it's poisonous and therefore you could say it's pretty important in our survival. So how does it now relate to us nowadays? Well, we use this way of thinking to basically categorize every object, thing, person we know together with its function. For example, you know a chair is something to sit on, a pen is something to write with, and you're not going to try to make pictures with a matchbook, nor are you going to try to charge your laptop with an orange, even if it's made by Apple. <laughs> so I guess now we know how and why we use pigeonholing. However, what happens when there's something that doesn't fit in the box? You've been taught to immediately assume that this object or person is dangerous, scary, and at least try not to uh, come in contact with it. So basically avoid contact. For example, when I see someone who tries to comb her hair with a spoon, my first assumptions are that she is crazy, demented, and probably out of her mind as well. And that's a perfect example of how just one action can lead to a lot of overgeneralizing. And that's exactly the problem overgeneralizing and stereotyping. If you encounter someone who's even remotely different from yourself, you just assume it's scary, dangerous, and you're not want to have any contact with it. And that can be basically based on anything, but mostly upon physical appearance. And that then is just discrimination in plain sense. And that then can be very destructive in, for example, young teens when they don't belong in the group of average or normal. Okay, so we basically know how, why, and why there's a problem now, right? But what can we do to solve it? Basically, um, what you can try is to identify an overlap. Right? Try to get a conversation because I know it's difficult to, to overcome the fear of the unknown, which is basically caused by insecurities and the, just the fear of it. Right? So you encounter something and that's scary and you're, you, it's not the same as you and you don't want to encounter it anymore. You just want to basically avoid contact, as I said. But what you can do to solve this would be, for example, to... Um, to not to judge anyone on appearance, and you can try other, you can teach others to do the exact same. But also, just as I said, you can also find the overlap. So when you start a conversation, maybe ask if you're both into the same sport. You might like the same music. You might believe in life after death. You might have been bullied, or you have bullied. Because all that, by identifying that overlap, all that contributes to 
creating from them and us because now all of a sudden it's not us versus them because they are like us because we both like I don't know rock or we both like hip hop or I don't know we both play football right and keeping this in mind I think we can actually solve this problem because we now can know how we create uh, from them and us and therefore we ourselves can actually shrink the divide between cultures and we ourselves can shrink the divide between them and us because after all we live in a world that's becoming inevitably more and more diverse by the minute so you could just be scared of everything and you could just try to stick with your own kind but what you could also do is just try to basically get to know someone because I mean you could argue that stereotyping is inevitable and you could argue that it's not even a bad thing but I mean what I think keeping in mind the, the theme of this speech I think the change of your immediate negative impulse on something that's not like your own is a change that we should cherish because we're all here together so we might as well make it work thank you